Welcome back to the channel. On today's episode, we are going to take a closer look at the Tesla P85D and start looking at some bits on it before we strip it apart to convert the T5 van. Now that is because I have not put this thing on the ramp since getting it from EV breakers. And obviously with the amount of damage that's there, I am slightly concerned that there may be something going on underneath. It's on 155,000 miles now. Oh, and it's actually sunny in the UK. Now that's just unheard of this time of year. So let's go. Before I lift it up on the ramp, let's have a close look at the actual damage. So with the door open, the door actually opens and shuts absolutely fine. But the main damage is inside here. There's actually a hole under this uh, gaffer tape. And obviously all this is caved in and that bad. And the door, well, as you can see, it's not in a particularly good state, which is why it was a category S write-off. Already some, also some quite bad damage on the wheel. A little bit of a bit missing there. It does spin fine and there's no major other damage that I know of, but the side of this car might tell a different story. Plus when Copart load these cars on, they actually pick them up with a forklift underneath on the battery pack. So I wanna see if there's any scratches under there. Now let's get it on the ramp. To move it onto the ramp, there's one thing that's already bad in that I am missing one of my tire sensors. It seems to come and go with a mind of its own. Sometimes it's there, sometimes it's not. The reversing cameras aren't great on these old Model S's either. And this hasn't got the extra pack with the extra things on either side. So I don't get other mirror views, unfortunately. It looks fairly central-ish. Now under here, you're spent to have these special pucks that go in place to lift it up with. I do not have any of those. So I am just gonna lift it up on the edge of the battery pack because I know they're stupidly thick and it should easily be able to take the weight. I don't think I've damaged anything by lifting it up on those bits. Oh, wait. You lift it up on those bits though. But they sit just up higher than this. That's where the pucks go in to space it down so you can lift, which is a bit annoying, really. What if I've got them on the front as well? Oh, I've got them on the front as well. So I might maybe be able to get the ramp to lift off of that. But I'm now fully committed to lifting it off the edge of the battery pack. I'm sure some of you are going to definitely tell me off for in the comments. <laughs> the car is now up on the ramp, as you can see. Let's take a closer look underneath and see if I can find any bad bits, shall we? Oh, there's a sensor here. Um, right, so under here, what have we got? There's some scuffing here, which I definitely do up and down the lane myself because it's quite low. Which is bashing on some bits there. But nothing too major. Well, this bit here looks really good. I don't think there's any major play in it. One thing I have noticed, which is not great, is this front disc on this side. Look at that. I mean, I know sometimes you get scoring on a disc, but there's literally a whole section. So it definitely needs new front brake discs because they are absolutely appalling. What's the other side like? Sorry, I hope to be making you guys feel sick. That side's fine. So the other side must be pretty bad. I'll have something stuck in a disc. Now, rest of this, the battery itself looks fairly good condition. Um, there's a number on there, as you can see, 0524. So it makes me think that this has been off in 2024. I, that's where the fuse lives. I'm guessing that this pack has been dropped out or there's been some other high voltage work carried out on this car because they pulled that fuse out. So I'm presuming they pulled that fuse as if it was a safety disconnect to allow them to work on some other high voltage systems within this vehicle. Looking at the battery bolts though, none of these look like they've been freshly removed. So I'd say the battery pack's definitely been left in the car, even if the fuse had been taken out. Because all of this looks untouched as such. One thing I do find a bit weird is there's odd bits of like this sealant in weird bits on the bottom of the battery pack. I don't know if someone can let me know in the comments what this is for, but it's on all these bits where you'd think this is like weld points. So just extra caution by Tesla maybe. Um, now, oh, maybe we'll uh, undo that one. What I think I'm going to do is drop this bottom cover off to have a look at the state of the large drive unit. Looks to just be loads of 10 mil and these are really tight. So I don't think these have been off for a very long time. Tesla didn't make this easy. You've got all these bits to take off as well. 
just to drop this bit out. I think I've got all the screws out. And there is the Tesla large drive unit. Now on these old Teslas, there is a major problem just in that bit there, where the seal breaks down, it lets fluid into the middle of the motor. So coolant, coolant, motor, bits for place fuel maybe, does not go well and it seizes the motor solid. So I need to get this motor dropped out of here, do a full refurbishment on it and replace the seal in there or blank it off. So that's my plan I think for the next episode or maybe the episode after that once we strip that van down is to actually do a full rebuild on a Tesla large drive unit for you. I mean, step by step, whole drive unit apart, inverter apart, every single seal, every bearing, maybe even repaint it to make it look super pretty. But the next episode, we're actually gonna strip the van apart, which I know might be a bit boring for all of you, but we have to get the van stripped so it can be scanned. So all of this here can go inside of it. In close the so there's definitely been a bit of oil leaking on these seals. They're probably breaking down because they're quite old. Both sides got a little tiny bit. Um, and then what you've got here is underneath there is your three bolts which link your inverter into your motor. And then here is where your HV comes in. And then you've got your low voltage connector there which does like all the throttle input comms. But this side just up in there, there is your encoder line which obviously senses the motor positioning to let the car know whether to go forward and back. The back end of this, the rest of this looks pretty good to be honest considering it's on 155,000 miles. It's actually really good condition, I'm amazed. I think most other cars you'd get at this mileage would be in a lot worse condition. A big part of the condition could be down to the fact that this was one owner from new. So I'm only the second owner, which means that whoever had it before had it from new. I Meaning they probably looked after it properly for the last 10 years until it got to me, but it's definitely not gonna look after this thing properly. <laughs> this is a sport unit because it says sport just there. But also it has an R just there. Now, if I am correct, R means that it's been refurbished or remanufactured. So this motor might not actually be as old as the car, which is probably a good thing since it's on such high mileage. Then all these front bolts, and I'm gonna pop this front system out. And we can have a nose up inside here. So we have a heat exchanger here, which does AC to liquid, which is probably for battery cooling would be my guess. And hidden up in there is also a drive unit. Now that is the power steering, 12 volt power steering motor there. As you can see, and somewhere up here there is a drive unit. I can't really see it very clearly though. It is absolutely buried. You may be able to see, and just there is a bearing holder. And that is another major problem for Teslas. Common thing where that bearing goes bad because it holds a little tiny stump shaft and it moves a bit and then that shaft wears out and you get a knocking on the front and a weird noise. It's normally that little stumpy shaft that fails on these. There's also one other thing that goes bad on these cars, which I'm gonna show you in the interior. One other major thing that goes bad, which is the screen. Now this screen has been replaced with a new screen, which is great. Um, and because I got the autopilot computer and there's some additional information here, I think if you press this, which gives you some information because it's got the different stuff here, which means it's been replaced because the old screens are really slow and really crap. And what you can do is if you hold this down, put the car into service mode. So you type in service, if I spell it right, and you hit OK, you hit enter, puts the car into service mode, which is quite a cool thing to do. And then you can look at all sorts of other things, I think, um, like, you know, VIN numbers, mileage, um, screen data, driver's assist. I think you can look at cameras, sensors, because it's a sensor fault on this car. One of the sensors isn't working, but it's not telling me which one. I'll see this is an older car, so it's not giving me that much information. Um, charging, so it's got a CCS retrofit, HV battery, what have we got? Telling me the HV battery and how charged it is, obviously. Um, tap a component, yeah, HV battery, you can see like contactors, BMS reset if you want to, fuse. 12 watt battery is probably gonna tell me it's bad because it's not good. Obviously that's the current type of battery that's in there. Um, but you can change the battery type to put different versions in, which is quite cool. Um, what else we got? Seats, calibrate seats, look at the thermal stuff, 
Um, so you do fluid drain, fluid fill, thermal testing, coolant purge, which is quite cool. And you, so you can do stuff with when you do an alignment. You can move the steering wheel and it checks the alignment. There's a lot of movement in the steering wheel, as you can see. One of the things on the MOT was basically stating that the knuckle had worn on the steering wheel. Um, and then doors is another one. You can do like door handle stuff. Um, now, from what I understand, the fact that these are green ones means these handles may have been replaced, but these ones haven't because they can't be calibrated. So these are the Gen 2s, but those ones are original generation. So you can't actually do anything with them. Um, also, you've got some information on the screen. There's not a huge amount on these old Teslas that you can actually look at and do, um, unlike the newer ones. The Model 3s, you can do loads and loads and loads more. So exit service mode, I'll hold it down to exit. Um, that'll actually let me drive the car again now at full speed back on as it should be um, and now I can put it into drive and we can pull off the ramp just like that thanks so much for watching this episode as I said we've got a test run the ramp we've had a look at it we haven't found any major major problems which is great uh, we've checked out service mode so the next thing to do is going to be get the van stripped apart and get that drive unit dropped out the back so I can replace that coolant issue or stop that coolant issue from ever happening and refurbish the drive unit because I think it'll be a really cool video to refurbish that drive unit. Um, anyway, thanks for watching. Hit a subscribe if you haven't already. Come back for the next one and I'll see you again very soon.